Right, thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Minika Ekanem. I'm from the Norwegian Mapping Authority Hydrographic Service. And I would like to talk to you about a project we're working on, uh, which is which will help us make a case for developing sustainable blue growth in our coastal communities in Norway. Just a bit about the Norwegian coastal area. Um, we have a total of 422 municipals, out of which 279 are coastal communities. So that says a lot. And the administrative border for the coastal communities goes out to 12 nautical miles. Uh, we have a total coastline of over 100,000 with, with the islands and about 80% of our population live in the coastal communities. Now, our government has lofty aspirations for blue growth and they have made many statements about it, um, as you can see um, written on there. We hope to be able to increase the export value of seafood uh, fivefold by 2050, for example. That's a lofty ambition. And they're all interested in sustainable growth, you know, creating blue jobs and also um, blue technology um, innovation. So blue jobs will help to the, use of, the optimal use of marine resources will help to create um, blue jobs, and that's the direction that the government wants to go. But the question is, how do we get there? There are so many users which you're already aware of, so I'm really not going to talk about um, this slide. One thing we know we have is a coastline full of possibilities. We have many users and there are many conflicts, and with the government's ambitions, there's growing pressure for space. There's growing pressure for new businesses, new ideas. But there are possibilities for new industries, and there are possibilities for coexistence if we know how. If you look at the picture on the right-hand side, yes, um, the coastal area is very fascinating, but what really lies underneath? One thing we found out is that we, especially in the coastal areas, we need new knowledge of the marine environment. And we also need access to this knowledge base. The key area for us to be able to meet the government's ambitions, the aspirations that they have, is for our planners, the coastal planners, to be able to optimize the use of the coastal areas, and so that um, the different conflicts of interest can coexist and also optimize space for new um, existence, new businesses that will indeed create the jobs, the blue jobs, and the blue growth. This is a typical dilemma for our aerial planners. Right here, you see that there are sites where we have aquaculture farms. We have sites where there are sites for fisheries. There are spawning areas. There are pipes and cables. There are the fairways, the ship um, traffic as well. And so there are a lot of conflicts. There are underwater tunnels, which probably you can't see. They're marine protected areas. And so this is the daily dilemma that the aerial planners face. So allocation of space for new possibilities becomes a problem without the knowledge gap that they have that would make it easier for them to optimize the use of existing space. And so what we are aiming for is um, coastal mapping with two other partners, which I will talk about um, later, so that we can really tap into new knowledge of the underwater landscapes and conditions. Right now, as it is, there isn't a coordinated data collection and publishing of 
um, marine maps. Uh, we, the hydrographic service, uh, we are responsible for the surveys uh, and giving the bathymetric data. There's also the Geological Survey Institute, and there's also the Institute of Marine Research, but we don't work together. So we go in, and when we're done, the next organization goes in, and when they're done, the third organization goes in. So we, it's, it's not coordinated. And at the pace which we work, at the traditional method we work with today, it's going to take years for us to be able to map the whole Norwegian coastline. And that is time that we do not have. So with coastal mapping, working together with the other two partners, we will be able to build up the knowledge which will be necessary for the aerial planners to reduce conflict or identify other compatible um, areas. And that would improve the capacity for new activities. So the key here is efficient allocation and sustainable use of space, which will then help us realize what the government is interested in, which is um, blue growth and which is environmental protection and coastal management. And so there's a project, a proposal which we have already submitted, an investment proposal to our ministry, which is the Ministry of Local Government and Modernization. And in that proposal, we've identified three pilot areas to start up with. The goal for us is that this would become um, a national program. In that proposal, we will also work on methods development with the other two partners, and we will test out new technology. Now, in the pilot areas, we will test new technology of an area already surveyed and compare and compare the data, and that would help us come up with um, arguments for its suitability, which we can submit to a ministry for funding. With the methods development, the other two partners, we work with them, but we work in a sequential mode. So one organization goes in, and then the next, and then the next. And if we're going to, if this is going to develop into a national survey, then it's going to be, it, it will take forever and a day. So we need to develop methods. We need to build synergy. And that's what we're going to do during the um, pilot phase. How will the three organizations work together? How can we reduce the production time? We will um, develop a set of products. We've been working with the users. I will talk about that soon. Um, traditionally, products are developed and they're put on our national geodata portal. And the user is expected to find your way around know what you need, look for what you need, and then download it. But we are look, we're, we're going to do it differently. We're actually working with the users to understand their workflow. What is your workflow? What are your tasks? What is the workflow? What data do you need at different points in the workflow? And that would help us to produce theme data sets that help the user to achieve his or her tasks. And so there'll be digital maps and services, and it will also include statistics. We found out from talking to the users that when it comes to them doing uh, situational analysis or uh, impact assessments, stat statistical data is very important for them or will help. Um, it would also be inspire compliance. Um, the key thing here is making it easy for the users to access um, and also easy for users with different levels of competence to be able to use it. Because we found out that especially with the those working in the municipal in municipalities, the big municipalities tend to have, I mean, those who know everything, qualified people. But the smaller municipalities, it is a challenge for them. So we have to take that into consideration as well. So the experts can do whatever they want with the data 
mix and match, create their own marine base maps, but those without the same high level of competence should still be able to... Whoa, okay. <laughs> um, and so what we're hoping is that for the project, for the pilot phase, it will take two years from data collection to products. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a cooperation between the Norwegian Mapping Authority Hydrographic Service, the Geological Service of Norway, and the Institute of Marine Research. And so we're going to build synergy, we're going to streamline our processes. <laughs> it's not going to be a sequential mode of working, we're going to work together. Um, and that would reduce the production times and we will develop methods that can be used when it becomes a national program. This is a bit of the user needs assessment. We're talking to both the public service and the private sector. So in the public service, we're looking at those who, are, who work with the regional plans, uh, those who are involved in application processing, for example, licenses for new fish farms. Um, and with the public uh, private sector, we're working with all sorts, those in construction, uh, those in aquaculture. But what we found out that we, we asked them to set their goals, give us a typical goal you, you achieve each day. What's your task for each day? And, we, and how do you, what are the actions you do to arrive at those tasks? Which data are you currently using? But what is really interesting, or what we found really interesting and very useful for the project is when we get to the pain points, then you really understand the frustrations they have in performing their daily tasks. And that is what the project hopes to address so that we take away your pain. And so we're working on understanding the different workflows and the data needed at each point in the workflow to be able to accomplish the task. Why is this important? On paper, it says for um, an application for aquaculture license should take 12 weeks on paper, but it takes much longer than that, some up to two years. And that's because of a lot of the pain points which we have identified in our, in our work with the users. This is some of the products that the three organizations will produce. Just a bit about the pilot areas. I said we have three pilot areas. Uh, the first one is in the new Stavanger municipality. Um, the whole region, they have a goal to increase seafood production. And right now, um, there's so many conflicts. And what they want to do is hopefully through this program, or through the project, they would be able to identify opportunities for coexistence. The next pilot area is in the northern part of Sunmara, and their goal is to create blue jobs. In the southern part of Sunmara, um, they already have marine base maps, and based on that, they were able to, to identify the opportunities for a wave uh, production plant. And so what North Sunmara hopes to do is tap into the experience and the knowledge gained from South Sunmara to create blue jobs in that municipality. The third pilot area is up north in Troms. They want to maintain their lead in seafood production and, and export. And so they're looking for new ways um, to do that. They want new knowledge of the area's suitability and so they can keep up their lead in seafood production and export. Uh, the benefits, knowledge-based management. And it's finished? Okay, the conclusion. This is the last slide, actually. I'll skip the other one. Um, knowledge-based um, management, which will help them make you know, better decisions. Uh, we ran a socioeconomic analysis of the three pilot areas that, that um, we want to use. And just using one indicator, we found that it will yield 150 million in benefits from an investment of 80 million Norwegian 
um, krona plus 250 new jobs. And we're talking about a size of 1,300 kilometers, yielding 150 million krona in benefits. So you do the math. If it becomes a national program with over 100,000 kilometers, how much will that yield? And thank you for your time.